That's a two-handed bluegill. <laughs> Look at the size of those bluegills. They are so cool. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. Holy cow. No, they're just huge. It is huge, huge blue blast gill. catching bluegills that are that big. Basically hold the line semi-tight, and every once in a while you pick it up and set down the weight, and bingo. Giants like that come on board. Huh, truly a magnificent specimen right here. I mean, this is something that is very, very special. Hey, early summer bluegill opportunities can offer some of the funnest action you can have all season. Remember, do everything you can to protect this resource. Use the amazing technology that's available today. Get out on the water and enjoy these awesome fish. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Got him that time. Got him, Dan. Wow, Net. holy cow, yeah. This thing is huge, dude. Wow, wow, will you see the size of this critter right here. We're doing something that I think a lot of people would enjoy, and that's catching some of the biggest bluegills Look at this guy. <laughs> you'll probably ever see. I mean, this is one of the hugest gills I've caught in years. Look at this thing, man. I mean, seriously, that's a two handed bluegill. Today we're going to look at using technology and science and what it takes to make these big gills and then how to catch them. I'm going to tail them down right here. Tail them down. Oh, there's a gill. Yep. Big gill? Yep. Sweet, Dan. Another net, net model? Yeah. Wow, is that thing tearing you up? Nice. Jeez, those are nice. Look fish. at him just doing the spinneroo. Holy cow. <laughs> Mini tornado. That is unreal. Hang on. <laughs> look at the size of those bluegills. Huge. They are so cool. Man, they look tropical. You know, big bluegills are not everywhere. Let's take a look at some of the science behind finding big bull gills. The lakes that we, we tend to see good bluegill growth are ones uh, where the, the habitat is actually decent. You know, we have, we have good quality um, emergent vegetation. We have uh, good epiphytic macroinvertebrates. They're basically bugs on plants, right? And then, um, you know, they have good quality vegetation that's actually submerged that provides a protection for the young of the year. It, um, it allows for the good quality growth because there's plenty of food available. And um, generally, the harvest has a tendency to be a little bit lower on some of those lakes. Um, or there might be some special regulations in place. We found that, that having reduced bag limits on some of our lakes actually can be beneficial to producing or maintaining a larger um, overall size structure of, of bluegill in most populations. So. so if I was gonna tell an angler where the best places to go to find big bluegill are, um, in the state of Minnesota, we're kind of, we're, we're blessed with a lot of different opportunity for unique scenarios. Um, if you think about places in central Minnesota, north central Minnesota, where the, the habitat quality is great, the water quality is great, the, uh, the forage amount that's available there for big bluegill is all there in quality. That's great. Um, if the harvest is actually relatively low, if you know the pressure's not that high, those things can equate to a, a population that has, is, is growing fairly well. Um, the growth is obviously pretty important, and with that said, there's some unique opportunities that present themselves in lakes that are shallow and maybe have a connection to another lake, and um, actually a winter kill sometimes is induced when we have severe winters. And those lakes, they tend to be very, or more nutrient rich, more productive, and um, the bluegills get in there right after the winter kill scenario, typically, and they'll grow like gangbusters. And we've seen this in several of our uh, lakes, shallower lakes, kind of in, in south central Minnesota, even on into southwestern Minnesota, where they might have a winter kill. Bluegills are either reintroduced or they get in there naturally, 
and all of a sudden they're, they're growing, you know, up to two times, maybe even three times faster than the going average. And that's something to think about is that the average bluegill in central Minnesota grows about one inch per year. So if we get growth rates that are twice or three times that, that's pretty phenomenal. And you can have, you know, bluegills that are attaining eight to nine inches in less than six years, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Larger reservoirs and uh, larger lakes tend to be able to support uh, more because the harvest isn't so keyed in. In other words, the, the pressure, even if it is higher pressure, it's hard to find some of those larger fish all the time. So they tend to protect some of the larger uh, males in the population. Look at that, I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Look at the size of this. How important are the bluegills, the larger fish? They're very important. And actually part of the, the efforts that we're trying to make with uh, using our reduced bag limit on six lakes that we did, is also doing some education to anglers, understanding the difference between male and female bluegill. But the males tend to be more brightly colored. They have a bull, more of a bull style nose or rounded style nose as opposed to, opposed to pointed. Uh, they tend to have more of the orange and or more colorful belly and um, less likely to be like that yellow belly and vertical barring. They won't have that as prevalent. Um, the males are the, the key protectors, and as I mentioned earlier with the, the nesting protection um, deal is that the, the larger males occupy some of the best habitat in the nesting colony. So their parental care is generally higher and better, and those are the ones that we really need to put back. And basically, without the larger parental males in the population, the population size at maturity declines over time. So one of the things that we were trying to educate folks on is that, you know, it's okay to take some fish home, but keep some of the moderate sized fish and return those biggest males to the population. And even to the point that you could actually keep some smaller females or those medium sized females or even larger females. And it wouldn't be a detriment to the population because the males are the ones that dictate the overall maximum size of that individual population. There you go, Dan. That's Gil. Is it? Just another huge one, Dan. This segment is brought to you by Gill Technical Fishing Gear. Just another huge one, Dan. Yeah, you gotta love that talon, don't you? It's uh, like a parking brake for your boat. You it can is. just sit, stop on a dime, and focus on <laughs> right where the fish are at. So, look at this. So I'm a big fan of chasing largemouth bass on, on new bodies of water. And a while back, I ran into a couple guys at the boat access, and we got to talking fishing, not only largemouth, but big bluegills like this. And we started talking about side imaging, 360 technology, and how these guys are employed. And these guys are, are hardcore, and I've become good friends with them. So I want to share with you what my buddy Casey does with his hummingbird units in the boat to use side imaging and 360 to the best of its ability. Usually when I first get to the lake, I like to set the units up at about 100 feet on each side of the boat. I don't need a real crisp, high def image of a rock pile or a weed clump. As long as I get a little tip that it's there, I can spin the boat around, set, the, set it down to like 50 feet, make another pass, and then get a really detailed image of the spot. Okay, for my chart speed, I like to set my chart speed to match the miles per hour I'm going down the shoreline. So if I'm going four miles an hour, I just quick set the speed to four and it matches really good and gives you a good picture. 360 I only use after I find the spots. Um, for instance, today I'll just start scanning and if it takes me 45 minutes to find what I'm looking for, I'll, I'll put the time in scanning. Once I have that area, I'll put a waypoint on it, spin the boat around, drop the trolling motor with the 360 in the water, and I can pull right up to the spot and be on it. If it's under 12 feet, then I can put the talons down and hold the boat on that spot. Okay, so after we mark the waypoint, we turn on with the 360 and we can pull right up to the spot. You can see the waypoint I dropped on there. That was just to get close to the area we wanted to fish but you can see all the divots here and you can actually see white lines moving around as a 360 makes its circle. And those are the big panfish that we're catching. They're actually swimming around from nest to nest. 
So it's real easy to see if these colonies are active or not just by seeing the white lines moving around. If you pull up to one of these and it's just the nest and there's nothing else around, chances are there's not fish using it. There's one, Dan. Giles? Jeez, they are just tough customers. Holy cow. I mean, look at that. Look at this tornado. I mean, these things are crazy. Beauty. Just another beauty. Oh, it smokes. There he is. You know, what's so cool about getting on a bite like this is having used the technology that we've got in the boat to be able to, to find these fish. So the side imaging and 360 imaging is just an incredible tool to see out to the side. The water is relatively clear in here, but we've got overcast and windy conditions. So it's not one of those classic bluegill deals where you can drive around and see the beds. And some of these beds would be deeper than, than you could even see with the naked eye. So employing that technology with side imaging and the 360 in your helix units is just incredible to get on big bites of fish like this. Oh, look at that. Nice, Dan. Man. They're liking that spinner, dude. They like that. <laughs> look at him, it's so much fun, man. It is, it's really cool. It is a blast catching bluegills that are that big. Look at the size of that thing. Double up. One, yeah, I got one too. Man, <laughs> this little tornadoes. Oh, you want me to net this guy for you? Oh man. Yeah. You I'll... got your hands full. I can get him. Okay. I can get him in. He's hooked good. Oh man. Wow. 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 Holy cow. Another just huge, huge, huge bluegill. We gotta let these big fish go. Fish like that is like a 50-inch muskie, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. You're catching them like that. That is just a good, good time. I'm gonna get this back and show you the gear that I'm using. You gotta let those big ones go, don't you? You have to. So we've got a couple different rigs on the deck right now for chasing these big gills, and these fish are of large enough size that I'm using the same rod that I'd use for live bait rigging for walleyes. This is a seven foot medium light fast action with just a small 1,000 size dial, dial or reel here. This drag is just incredibly smooth. I've got six pound suffix nano braid on here with a four pound suffix fluorocarbon leader. I'm drop shotting and jigging with this rod, but of course I've also got the St. Croix panfish series of rods. This is also a seven foot extra fast rod. I mean, the, the two are dynamite. You definitely want to try the St. Croix series. It makes the, in the panfish side so fun for handling the fish. But if you don't have a panfish rod, gills like this, you can totally get away with fishing your standard walleye outfit. Drill fest. Ooh, this is a better one <laughs> Is here. it? Nice. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. That is just a magnum. I mean, the thing with those, those kind of fish is you look at a giant fish like a, like a big muskie, and a fish like that can be older than a 50, 55 inch muskie. Yeah, yeah. They're not, uh, not, I mean, again, it's just not a, it's not a harvest resource. It's just strictly for sport when they get to be that size. Yeah, what were those guys saying? A, a 10 inch, 10 inch bluegill like that can be anywhere from 10 to 15 years old. Easily, yep. That kind of puts bet. it into perspective how, how precious those fish are. This drop shotting, I almost feel like I'm cheating. <laughs> I should play with some, some plastics a little bit. Man, this is just another huge fish. But when it comes to effective ways to present baits, you know, I would say most guys traditionally are fishing in the spring. You're seeing guys fishing with slip bobbers. And that's an amazing way to catch fish. I mean, it keeps the bait right in the zone that it needs to be at. But drop shotting is another extremely effective way to do this. Now, I drop shot, of course, weed lines for big bass. But early in the season, when a lot of guys are corking for crappies and even bluegills, we're employing drop shots. It's the same idea as a cork, but many times when you got wind, conditions like that where a cork might get the bait moving really quick a drop shot keeps the bait in the same position you want it and you're not fighting the wind the idea is you just cast it out to the area you want you basically hold the line semi-tight and every once in a while you pick it up and set down the weight and bingo 
Giants like that, come on board. You don't get bit here in a second. I'll scoot this a little more forward. There's one. Nice. Look at the load you get in that rod. I mean, people talk about smallmouth being the toughest fish that there is pound for pound. I might have to argue that gills, given the size to get large, <laughs> would give smallmouth a run for their money. If they jumped, there'd be no question about it. Just a nice one, Dan. Not a monster, but look at that. Not a monster. I would say anywhere you catch a fish like that, it really is a monster. But today we are on a run of really good size, really good size gills. And we're catching some. On drop shots with live bait. We're catching them on a variety of different presentations, but here's our top picks for bluegill presentations early in the season like this. See you, dude. Bloop. The methodology of finding early pre-spawn gills is kind of a run and gun approach. We drive the shoreline with the side imaging, isolating colonies of bedding fish. We drop waypoints on all we can find. Then we move fairly quickly through these zones with a horizontal presentation to find the most active fish. Some of the best lures for this are a VMC 1 32nd ounce moon eye jig with a big bite tube around an inch and a half, a number two Rapala original, or an ultralight minnow. It's a delicate balance of a lure that you can fish moderately fast, but still slow down a little to force them to bite. Today I chose the VMC hot skirt with the spinner. This is proving to be very effective. Once we slow down and sit on a spot, nothing else produces a drop shot. You can rig it two ways. Number one, we use a Palomar knot to tie a sure set drop shot hook with a two foot drop line. Or if you want something simpler, you can use a VMC size six spin shot hook. After this, you can use any number of big bite soft plastics or live bait if you wish. The plastics are handy because they last far longer than meat, they are more inexpensive, and you don't have to constantly re-rig. Got him? Yep. Nice. You really drill that thing, yeah. yeah. Is that a netable bottle? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Got him? Yep. Nice. They really drill that thing, yeah. yeah. Is that a netable bottle? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Look at the size of this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Here you be, sir. Beautiful. Nice one. Man, oh man, these things are just awesome. Talk about a special kind of fish. Oh, missed one. There's one. So Dan's, you know, employing the, the little spinner, the cast and retrieve. Great way to find fish. So not all these colonies that we see on the Sign it, but you can actually have fish on them. So having those two options, one for you know searching with like a little crankbait or a little spinner, like wow, Dan's got it. it's a great way to see if there's fish there. And he was kicking my butt right away just because he was fishing so much faster. Now that I've I've switched up to the drop shot, it's definitely producing. This is a netable model, Dan. You got it. Unbelievable. Him. Wow, that is just unbelievable. Look at the size of this creature. Oh, truly a magnificent specimen right here. I mean, this is something that is very, very special. Hey, early summer bluegill opportunities can offer some of the funnest action you can have all season. Remember, do everything you can to protect this resource. Use the amazing technology that's available today. Get out on the water and enjoy these awesome fish. Hey, ever since we started The Edge, I close every show with what I believe is something that is inspirational and uplifting, and I often refer to the Bible, which I believe is the inspired Word of God. You know, I know that we all don't believe the same. Many people look at the Bible and interpret it slightly different. 
and uh, uh, I'm not going to sit there and argue with anybody on that. I believe and respect your beliefs. I want to read a, a letter to you that I just got recently that uh, really moved me. A couple items are on my mind today. As a person that most is passionate about two things in my life, other than my wife and children, which are fishing and my faith and belief in God. Thank you for all that you and your incredible team do in producing your shows. The effort you make in educating, entertaining, and filming goes beyond the average professional level. I always learn from you and your team. Your shows are fun to watch, and as I have never caught a walleye, it is something that I must do with a fly rod before my time is called. Perhaps most importantly to me about your shows, and as an Orthodox Jew, is that you are unabashed and not afraid to talk about your faith and the belief in the Almighty. Your belief and appreciation of Jesus in caps, a nice Jewish man. In a world of increasing non-believers, deniers, and secularism, better known as meism, it is most refreshing to hear someone not of my faith speak of God and his faith in such glowing terms and with such a positive demeanor. I always says something to chew on in my mind after I listen to you at the end of your show. I appreciate them, look forward to them. I enjoy them and please keep up your faith commitment to those most cherished values. Let no man ever deny you or try to hold you back from your comments. Regards, Andy. Andy, I really appreciate that. I had to share that with you. I was really blessed by it. And I do believe everything that is in this book. It is life-changing life-changing, life-changing. I know what it has done and means to me. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you all on the water.